but I just had a confrontation with two neighbors. One of them, Steve, lives uh, that way, right next door. We were getting along all right, but because of the weeks of ice and snow and mud and me not being able to go out in the yard and do anything, uh, there are some repairs that need to be done to the little flimsy fence I put up, and Weasel is getting out. And Steve came over to complain to me that Weasel is going to the bathroom in his yard. I said, well, I'll try to clean it up more often. As I, I just don't want him in my yard. And I said, well, then I could use some help with the fence. Um, and then while Steve was there, Ray, the mentally ill man, uh, sees a video about my neighbor. Ray was standing right in my yard. Apparently, Weasel had gotten out while I was um, on a Skype phone call with somebody. I was loose in a trailer park. And uh, Ray tried the other day to take him from me right in front of me. And I had to literally put my phys my body physically between Ray and the dog to get my dog back. Scared the dog, of course. So I don't usually do that. I'm very alarmed by Ray's behavior. Ray has stolen both Colt and Weasel. He had Weasel for 12 or more hours. I was in very deep grief looking all over the neighborhood. So was Steve's uh, partner, Linda. Uh, he didn't tell anybody except finally he told Barbara that he had taken Weasel because I don't take care of my dogs, which is a typical thing an animal hoarder will say, to come up with an excuse like that to be able to steal somebody else's property. And he has a history of having stolen other people's animals before. It's a way he covers his mental illness. Okay, so Ray got right up in my fence. After Steve spoke to me, he walked away, and I wasn't appropriately dressed to go outside. So I needed to put on a pair of pants. I needed to put on a bathrobe. I also needed to urinate and find my outdoor shoes, not my bedroom slippers. And Ray was right outside babbling about, I'll put Weasel over the fence. I don't want him. He knows I don't want him to touch my dogs. I'll put him over the fence. I'll put him over the fence. Well, I finally got my clothes on, and I went outside to go talk to Steve to explain to him that I can't fix the fence, that I need help. And, you know, people are really good out here about criticizing me for not having done something. And they've got the tools, the equipment, the physical strength, the resources to know how to be able to do it and won't help me. And I don't have any of those things. So I went over to say, look, have you noticed you haven't seen me in months? That I never come outside anymore? That I know I'm not welcome here? That I know that people here hate me? And I'm just trying to survive until I can get out? As I was trying to get to, Ray, to Steve's house, Ray stood in my way, forced me to walk in the mud and the ice. I almost fell. He was standing on my carpet, so I couldn't walk on it. I don't want to physically have to touch him. And he said, I hear you're looking for a home for Colt. How does he know that? I don't recall even telling anybody in the park that. How does he know I need a home for Colt? It's certainly not going to be his. His dogs are mentally ill. The dogs he had up in Estancia were sick. Half of them had to be destroyed. They were living indoors with feces and urine. Ammonia smells so, so bad they had to send a hazmat team in. My dogs are not going to be living with Ray if I have anything to say about it. So people are gossiping about me. I don't know who. It's either Steve and Linda. It may be Barbara. I'll, I, I don't know how or why. But I think I'm not going to be able to go over to Barbara's for burnt sausage, bad coffee, and boiled ham anymore. Or maybe I said something to the landlord. I don't know. I don't know. I don't remember. I didn't know it was going to get broadcast to a psychotic, mentally ill man who's an animal hoarder and, and an abuser. So my short-term plan is I'm going to do what I can to save up money and get out of here. The easiest thing for me to do would be to go to Albuquerque. The thing I want to do is go to Gallup, at least Gallup. But it's very far. Housing's at a premium out there. I don't know people well enough to ask about places for rent, etc. So I'm going to start looking at Albuquerque. I'm going to need a lot of moral support.
not money, moral support. I'm also going to need to know if any of you know people in Albuquerque and the surrounding areas close to Albuquerque. If you can help me um, network about finding housing, I'd be very grateful. I need space for a 30-foot travel trailer, a pickup truck, and a small utility trailer less than five feet long. I need to be able to fence it. I have four cats and two dogs. The dogs stay out in the yard. When there's a fence, the dogs stay out in the yard most of the time, except Weasel comes in when he's cold. And the cats are kind of, the cats hang out around the trailer. They'll wander out a little bit. Mostly they stick pretty close to home. I need the price to be around $300 a month, including utilities. A work exchange if possible. But that's my immediate goal. Care of my physical health, improving my strength. Um, I may have a lead on getting my teeth fixed. I'll be selling little things. They probably won't be worth what I'll ask for them. I'll be selling little things on eBay and so on. If you can possibly see it in your hearts too, support me in doing that. I may have some leads on some freelance work too through uh, a listserv I'm on. I need to leave this place. That man was right outside my door just now. I need to leave this place. And his, he's the landlord's friend. I need to go someplace safe. And I need to do it before I get kicked out and have to rush out in an emergency. I need to set this up and I need to do it well. And I'm going to need emotional and moral support and any kind of networking skills people have. I can't have this coming into my property like this. And I won't speak to him. So, of course, he said, well, you're welcome. This is a man who threatened to kill me who threatened to beat me, who abandoned me seven miles up on a country road on a hot, sunny day when I wasn't wearing good walking shoes, just left me there, and he's going to give me a lecture on uh, etiquette? I won't speak to him. And it's all I can do to keep from hitting him. And if I ever touch him, I won't finish until I'm in jail. So, yeah, I could use some help getting out of here. Thanks.